Hi, my name is Mary, and today I'm going to show you how to optimize a luminescent chemical reaction. And in this experiment, there will be a lot of trials, so it's best to design a sequence of test reactions. Since we're testing three variables, it's important to change only one at a time. And the reaction that emits the most light will be the optimum reaction. And because there's a not a listed procedure, it's best to come up with a plan of what to test. So first, I will test for pH, because certain amounts will emit light while others will not. Second, I will test for concentration, because the brightness of the light will differ depending on the certain concentrations of <clears throat> hydrogen ions. And lastly, I will test for catalysts, and since catalysts speed up the reaction, we can determine which substance will make the solution the brightest and last the longest. In all of these reactions, we will use a one oxidizing agent, either hydrogen peroxide or sodium hypochlorite, and then luminol. And the luminol will be added last so that we can observe for any light emission. Once you have a plan, obtain your eight solutions in only six beakers, because the other three will be in dropper bottles that you'll be sharing with the class. You can label using a notebook paper, or you can just use a marker and label it on the beaker. Also, prepare a disposable glass pipette with a rubber bulb, and use the same pipette for the same solution so that there will be no contamination. And you don't have to get the exact amount your lab manual specifies, but the solution shouldn't be wasted and also prepare several clean test tubes so that you can test your reactions. Now, prepare three large beakers for your waste. And here I've labeled them as well, non-halogenated, halogenated, and heavy metals. Luminol and hydrogen peroxide should be disposed of in the non-halogenated waste since they don't contain any halogens. Bleach in the halogenated waste since it contains chloride, a halogen, and catalysts in the heavy metals since they are metals. And if you're ever unsure of what beakers contain what reactants, then you can combine them in a large beaker and dispose of it in the heavy metals waste. But if you've labeled them, then it shouldn't be a problem. Now that you have a plan and all of your materials, you can turn off the lights to observe for any blue light. Make sure that the ratios are not too large or too small because a large ratio will only waste materials and a small one will not yield any results that you can see. And remember, all reactions will only have one oxidizer and luminol added to it at the end. So now I'm going to show you examples of reactions that emit various amounts of light. When combining the reactants, Remember to add luminol last to initiate the reaction. In this reaction, there is no light. Now here's another reaction. As you can see, the light is very faint. Since you want the optimum conditions for this reaction, keep trying until you have a reaction that emits the most amount of light. And remember to change only one variable at a time. Here's another example. And in this one, the blue light is more visible and it lasts longer. So those are examples of reactions that emitted different amounts of light. Remember that only one oxidizer is used in each reaction and to only change one variable at a time. Add luminol once you're ready to observe for light. Hopefully I gave you an idea of how to optimize a chemiluminescent reaction. Have fun and experiment! Bye!